Hi everyone. Our lesson for today is about the unit circle and the circular functions. In our previous discussion, we defined the six trigonometric functions in such a way that the domain of each function was a set of angles in standard position. Now, these angles can be measured in degrees or in regions. In advanced courses like calculus, it's necessary to modify the trigonometric functions so that their domains consist of real numbers instead of angles. So we can do this by using the relationship between an angle theta and an arc length s on a circle. In this figure, we start at point one zero and measure an arc length s along circle s here. So if s or the arc length is greater than zero, then the arc is measured in a counterclockwise direction. And if it's less than zero, then the direction is clockwise. Now, on the other hand, if S is equal to zero, then no arc is measured. Now, let us consider the end point of an arc here at point P with coordinate X, Y. And the figure here is a unit circle. It has a center at the origin and radius equal to 1. Now, recalling our previous lesson with equation of a circle, we will come up with equation of this unit circle equal to x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, we will relate the region measure of theta to the arc length s. And the arc length S is equal to the product of radius and theta in region measure. Now, in reference to this unit circle, R is 1. So, we can say that S equals theta. So, S which is measured in linear units such as inches or centimeters is numerically equal to theta, which is measured in regions. Thus, the trigonometric functions of angle theta in regions found by using a point x, y on the unit circle can be rewritten as functions of arc length s, which is now a real number. So when interpreted, so we be call them as uh, circular functions. Since x represents the cosine and y represents sine of s, and because in the previous discussion on converting between degrees and regions, we can summarize a great deal of information in a concise manner as seen in the next figure. Now, in evaluating circular function, we will be dealing with the arc length, not anymore with the angles. And these points were taken in relation to the trigonometric function values of special angles, as well as the trigonometric function values of quadrantal angles. So again, Working on the circular function such as cosine s equals the x coordinate, while sine s equals the y coordinates, tangent s equals y all over x, secant s equals 1 all over x, cosecant s equals one all over y and cotangent s equals x all over y. 
So let us work on evaluating circular function values of an arc length S. So for example, we want to evaluate cosine pi over 6. So by inspection on the x-coordinate of arc length equal to pi over 6, cosine pi over 6 equals square root of 3 all over 2. How about sine pi over 4? By inspection, arc length pi over 4 has a coordinate equal to square root of 2 over 2. How about tangent 2 pi over 3? So this equals y all over x. So by inspection, y and x coordinates of 2 pi over 3 here is equal to 3 square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half respectively. So simplifying the complex fraction, we have tangent 2 pi over 3 equals negative square root of 3. How about secant 7 pi over 6? So secant 7 pi over 6 is equal to 1 all over x. So looking at the x coordinate for 7 pi over 6, we have negative square root of 3 all over 2. So its reciprocal is negative, negative 2 all over square root of 3. So secant 7 pi over 6 is equal to negative 2 square root of 3 all over 3. Okay. How about cosecant 4 pi over 3? So cosecant 4 pi over 3 is equal to 1 all over y, which is by inspection, the y coordinates is negative square root of 3 over 2, and its reciprocal is negative 2 all over square root of 3. And this is equal to negative 2 square root of 3 all over 3. How about cotangent 5 pi over 3? So this is equal to x over y. So going to 5 pi over 3, we have x equals 1 half. And then the y coordinate equals negative square root of 3 all over 2. Simplifying the complex fraction, we have negative 1 all over square root of 3, which is equal to negative square root of 3 over 3. How about sine 3 pi? So 3 pi exceeds one rotation, so we have to work on its coterminal value. So this is 3 pi less 2 pi, so we have pi. So sine 3 pi equals sine pi. So sine pi equals the y coordinate in reference to arc length pi. So we have 0 here as sine 3 pi. How about cosine 4 pi? Cosine 4 pi is equivalent to cosine 2 pi or cosine 0. And cosine 2 pi is equivalent to cosine 0. So we have 1 here. So how about tangent 13 pi over 6? Now, 
subtracting 13 pi over 6 by 1 complete rotation, which is equal to 12 pi over 6, we have pi over 6 here. And tangent 13 pi over 6 equals tangent pi over 6. And tangent pi over 6 equals y all over x. And this is 1 half all over square root of 3 over 2. And tangent 13 pi over 6 is equal to one all over square root of three, which is equal to square root of three over three. Okay. How about cosine five pi over two? So cosine five pi over two plus is equivalent to cosine pi over two. So by inspection, the x coordinate of arc length pi over 2 is equal to 0. So that is how we basically evaluate circular functions. So our next discussion will be working on the graph of we'll be working on the graph of circular functions. And that's it for now.